Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to talk about the features you should look out for when choosing a monitor for graphic design work. Now this video is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the article that I've already written on my blog. The link will be in the video description below. The content in the article and in this video is essentially the same except on the article, I do have some recommendations for monitors that you can consider. My first advice is get the right type of monitor for the work that you do. So nowadays there are a lot of different types of monitors out there in the market. Monitors for gaming, graphic design, photo and video editing, monitors for general office work. So all these monitors, they are designed with features that are specific to certain users. You don't want to pay extra money to buy features that you don't need, and you certainly don't want to buy the wrong monitor for the type of work that you do. So when it comes to graphic design, color accuracy is important. So nowadays, most monitors, they are LCD monitors, and there are generally two types of panels that are used for LCD monitors. IPS and TN. So when you go for graphic design monitors, always look for IPS monitors because they have better color accuracy, better color reproduction, and also the viewing angles are much better. What I mean by viewing angles is when you look at the monitor like this, and when you tilt your monitor up or down, left or right, the colors should not shift. So here I have two monitors, they are displayed at different angles. So this one is facing me like this, and this one is almost facing the camera, and the colors, they should look identical because these are IPS panel. With TN panels, when the monitor is shifted to an angle, the colors will shift, so you will not get to see the accurate color because the colors have shifted. So always look for IPS panels. Within the category of IPS panels, there are different levels of color support. So the most common would be sRGB because most monitors are actually using sRGB out there. And if you are doing work where your work is going to be viewed on screen by other people, for example, if you do web design, graphic design, you do digital art, you do maybe photography, but the photos will only appear on websites. Um, as long as your work appears on a screen, you can actually go for sRGB. And if you are doing print design where you need to print your work and then compare your printed proof against your monitor, then I would say go for Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB monitors are significantly more expensive compared to sRGB because uh, Adobe RGB is a wider color gamut that produces more colors. And because it produces more colors, it can actually match what you see, your printed proof in real life, as you would see on screen. So those would be the most color accurate monitors. If you're doing print design, but you don't actually need to compare printed proofs against the monitor, you can just go for sRGB displays. Those are going to save you a lot more money. Basically what you want is to have a monitor that can produce the colors that are as close as possible to the work that you create. So if you create print, get Adobe RGB. If you create work for screens, for displays, for web, get sRGB. And there are different qualities of uh, IPS panels. There are the 8-bit color panels and the 10-bit color panels. 10-bit colors will be able to produce more colors, up to 1 billion colors. 8-bit colors, uh, usually the sRGB on monitors, they will be able to produce up to 16 uh, million colors. So uh, the thing is, this is sRGB and this is Adobe RGB. Side by side like this, you won't be able to tell the difference uh, just by looking at them. It's only when you compare uh, actual work against the screen that you will be able to notice the difference. So if I have a printer proof and I compare it to the Adobe RGB, the real life printer proof should look as what I will see on the screen but um, the colors of the printed proof will be slightly different on the sRGB screen because this will not be able to produce uh, colors that are as close to real life as possible. For 10-bit color workflow, you do need to have the proper hardware and software. So for example, you need a 10-bit color monitor, a graphics card that can output 10-bit color and software that can edit the 10-bit color so that you can see the actual colors on your 10-bit monitor. Next, let's talk about size and resolution. So nowadays, you can get really huge monitors with very high resolution. 
The larger the monitor and the higher the resolution, the more expensive it will be. In terms of price and value, I recommend a resolution of 2560 by 1440p, and that's a resolution that works really great on a 27-inch screen here, like what I have here with this uh, BenQ monitor. And all the user interface elements, they are big, very comfortable to see the buttons, the controls, the dials, the thumbnails, all those things are big to see, very easy on the eyes. On 4K monitors, I do recommend you get at least 32 inch so that the user interface elements can be big. If you are using Windows, if you're using 4K on Windows and your monitor is smaller, you can actually scale the user interface, but on Mac OS, you cannot do that. So uh, generally speaking for 4K, I recommend at least 32 inch and above. But 4K monitors, uh, they are quite expensive. Now there are advantages to 4K monitors. Because there is more resolution, you will be able to see more of your work. And because the resolution is so high, there are more pixels, you can see more details. So here, for example, I can see more thumbnails. I can see 10 thumbnails on the row, and here I can only see eight thumbnails. So more resolution allows me to display more content and because of that, I don't need to scroll down as much and I can save uh, quite some time. Another advantage of 4K monitors is if you are editing 4K videos, you can view your video at native resolution at 4K one to one. So that will give you a really accurate representation of your work. And not just that, you can see your videos really sharp and it looks really good with the sharpness and all those details. But 4K monitors, as I've mentioned, they are quite pricey. Other features I would look out for would be the ports. So nowadays for graphic design monitors, they usually support HDMI and display ports. Another useful port would be the SD card reader. So if you take a lot of photos using SD cards, uh, having the SD card reader can be really convenient. And many of these monitors, they usually have the USB port and they can act as USB hubs. So when you uh, plug in your USB thumb drive or your SD card into the monitor, you can actually transfer files onto your computer. So look for monitors that can actually act as USB hubs. And some monitors actually come with Thunderbolt 3 nowadays. For example, this is the BenQ PD3220U, which has Thunderbolt 3 support, which means if you have a laptop that has Thunderbolt 3, you can actually connect it to this monitor and it will be able to output the visual to the monitor without using another graphic uh, display cable. And also the Thunderbolt 3 cable can actually charge your uh, USB-C devices, or your Thunderbolt 3 devices, so that's very convenient. Another thing to um, consider is getting a monitor with a shading hood. This shading hood is exceptionally useful, especially if you are working in an environment where there are a lot of lights. For example, here I have this window in front of me and sometimes the lighting will change, but this shading hood will be able to block out unwanted light. So this is very useful. The last thing I want to say is do get yourself a color calibrator. This is the Spider 5 Pro that I've been using for years. This is important to make the colors accurate on your screen. Now out of the box, the colors of the LCD displays, they should look good. But to get the most accurate colors, you do have to color calibrate the screen. So for example, I have this monitor that I've been using for years. This is an old monitor, it has turned yellow. So I need to color calibrate this monitor to remove the yellow cast so that the colors on this will be accurate and will match other monitors that I'm using. So I need to color calibrate all the monitors that I use so that the colors will be consistent across all the displays. So this is quite important, but you don't have to actually buy this um, when you first get your monitor, you can buy this maybe one year later because um, out of the box colors on those monitors nowadays, they look pretty good. 
Alright, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and do check out the article that I have on my blog for my monitor recommendations. Links will be in the video description below as well as links to reviews to all the monitors that I have used, such as my all-time favorite, the BenQ SW2700 PT, and this is the BenQ PD3220U, and all the various Dell monitors that I have tried before. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.